na nabanggit kanina, today is a uh, uh, shortened service, Sir Union. I think may mga meeting yata, no? Uh, mamaya. And um, uh, last Tuesday, actually, uh, January 16, <laughs> Christian messaged me kasi she, he went uh, uh, a procedure and uh, hindi na sure kung makakapunta siya ngayon. So it's good to see <laughs> uh, si Christian. Yeah. And uh, he asked me to do a reunion uh, for for today. And every time I'm asked or if I'm uh, I have the opportunity to share in front, um, as much as possible I say yes. Yeah, because uh, na realize every time I uh, uh, work on a lesson, ang nagbe benefit talaga ako more than anyone else. So pero sinare ko na rin yon sa inyo, kasi just so uh, uh, to set the tone. Because, uh, uh, of course, uh, alam niyo ba yung nangyari kay Jokoy? Uh, alam niyo si Jokoy? Uh, Jokoy had 10 days to prepare for the glow and glow. So, I only have 4 days. <laughs> so, but, um, yeah, but kidding aside, um, I know uh, this, this lesson I would like to share with you. Uh, it's very raw, <laughs> uh, meaning I didn't have the chance to filter it and all that. Maybe later on, I'll try to polish it more. It's very raw, but uh, there's so much. Uh, that I have learned, and the challenge is to compress it. Ano ba ibibigay yung mga important lang? But please bear with me, and I hope that uh, you will still learn, even though it uh, still have much uh, work that's needed. So last week, uh, nag-share sa atin si Kuya Rumel. Naalala niyo pa ba yung title? Upgrade. So may mga nag-upgrade na ba dyan? <laughs> na, hindi ng gadgets, no? But, uh, um, this, the lesson of Kuya Romel, na appreciate ko siya, um, and um, uh, my key takeaways would be, of course, we have no choice. Yan ang binanggit ni Kuya Romel. We have no choice. Change will happen in our lives. And what can, we can choose lang is how we will change. Okay? And then, binanggit niya dun sa, sa lesson niya na, Merong dalawang direction lang na pwede ka mag-change. There are only two choices. Either you be conformed or you be transformed. And he also talks about, uh, he talked about the importance ng mind. Na mind actually is a key to having transformations in our life. Uh, actually, yun yung theme ng, alam niyo yung movie na Inception? Ayan. So parang ganun yung idea puts ideas in your mind and then it changes the course of your action. That's why very important, very crucial yung role ng, uh, ng mind. That's why sabi niya, we have to renew, we have to upgrade our minds. And the, the blessing of having upgraded minds is we get to understand and appreciate the will of God. And with that understanding, we are able to embrace that. And we are able to agree and take action in relation sa gusto ni God na, na ipagawa sa atin. So, upgraded mind helps us to be transformed to the image of Christ. So, so for my sermon actually, it's sort of like a follow-up. No? I want to, it, it will build on what Kuya Romel has shared. And um, and I'll try to continue on in the same thoughts. Uh, and regarding Sir Munion, um, ang idea ko Sir Munion is, yun nga, we have the main message, yun na rin yung communion. Yeah, yun na. Actually, ito, it, ito na yung communion, yun na rin ang sermon. <laughs> so, baliktad na siya, no? So, the, 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 the message is really more about communion also. It's about the cross of Christ. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're just going to look at one scripture, Galatians 5, 16 to 25, na naka-flash ngayon dyan. So we're going to read it, and then, so ito yung map natin, no? We're going to read it, provide the background of Galatians, and then after mabigay ko yung background, we will, I'll give you some takeaways, key takeaways, and then we're going to pray and take the communion. Okay? So that's uh, what we're gonna do. So baka inaantay nyo mag-pray ako bago tumuloy. Ayun yung, 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 ayun yung
So, let's read. Galatians 5, 16 to 25. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, or, uh, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of rage, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like this. Familiar time and the like, we must have seen study that. Eh, no? um, I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have, been cruci have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Okay, so to help us understand the scripture, um, there are, I highlighted certain words that help me appreciate these words. So, and I will, uh, for our discussion, I will uh, point to those things so that you can have the same appreciation. So, again, katulad na banggit ko, magsimula ako sa background. Ano ba yung background ng Galatians? Actually, dito sa scripture na binasa natin, medyo magkakaroon tayo ng clue kung ano yung background. No? So, tingnan natin sa verse 18. May binanggit siya dyan eh. Verse 18, in-underline ko yung under the law. Under the law. Tapos, sa verse 23, against such things, there is no law. Okay? Pinag-usapan niya yung spirit, flesh, pero may mga nakai-insert about the law. So, and then, when I, I checked on ano ba yung background ng, uh, ng letter ni Paul sa Galatia, uh, then it made sense to me kung bakit ba yung ganito yung uh, tema ng pagsasalita niya. So, si Paul, actually, siya yung, uh, uh, ito yung letter niya sa group ng churches sa Galatia. Okay? And uh, si Paul, actually, um, personally, became part of... Uh, of, uh, uh, you know, parang church planting, kilala niya yung mga tao doon. Okay? Personally, naging involved siya. That's why, in a way, you can imagine na may close relationship sila. Kaya kung mapapansin mo, medyo very strong yung tono ng Galatians. Kasi nga, meron ng, meron ganong, ano, may, rela may relationship na sila. May relationship na sila. And, Kapag babasahin natin yung uh, Galatians na letter, may central theme siya. Ibig sabihin, pag binasa mo, magkakaroon ka na idea, ah, mukhang ito yung ina-address ni Paul. Ah, ito yung ina-address ni Paul. Ang main message nung Galatia is, a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith. Kaya niya ina-emphasize yun kasi merong nangyayari sa church, churches dun sa Galatia. Yung gospel na tinuro niya about gospel of grace, eventually, nag-start ng magkaroon ng ibang teaching sa Galatia. There's a group, uh, Judaizers, uh, sa, I think, there's a group, which is, ito yung uh, uh, challenge dati, no? Ng mga Jews na nag-start mag-mingle sa mga Gentiles, ganyan. Merong lumalabas na gospel of works that they need to work out their salvation. Not to work out their salvation doon sa isang context, but, but they need to be circumcised, they need to follow the uh, mosaic law. So parang may mga kailangan silang gawin para maging tama sa Diyos. Okay? And sinasabi ni Paul, kahit angel pa, yeah, doon yun eh, sa Galatia, kahit angel pa ang bumaba. No? Kung ibang tinuturong gospel, mali yun. 
Okay? Because the gospel of grace, yun ang totoong gospel. It's not the gospel of work. So, nung tingnan ko yung background na yun, nagkaroon ngayon ako ng appreciation na, ah, okay, kaya niya dinidiscuss dito. Kasi, na-realize ko, uh, dinidiscuss niya dito yung desires of the flesh and the spirit. Kino-contrast niya. And isip ko, para bang si Paul ba? Para bang sinulat niya yun? Kasi, is there something that's happening so bad in Galatia? Kasi sa Corinth, ganun, di ba? They are really sinning. So, well, ibig sabihin, nung pinapagalitan ni Paul, directly, kasi kinokorek niya. But I didn't get any hint na may ganun sa galing siya. They were actually doing okay. It's just that, kaya, kaya, kaya inunahan ni, ni ano, kasi ang, uh, uh, what's happening is not that the Galatian churches, is, they are sinning badly. No, I think what's happening is they are transforming, they're starting to change. But he wants to remind people that that change, that transformation should not be based on works. It's based on grace. You don't follow yung, ano, hindi mo kailangan pa-circumcise, ano, kasi justified ka na. So, kung kailangan nating sundin ang fruit of the Spirit, hindi dahil resulta yan ng pagsunod mo sa lo. Resulta yan ng grace ni God. Yun yung, yun yung tema, no? So, having set the tone nung appreciation ng verse na to, ano yung mga key takeaway ko sa sarili ko? So, trinay kong uh, uh, ilagay sa dalawa. One is the challenge. And then second is the blessing. One is the challenge. Second is the blessing. So, parang two points. First point, the challenge. Ang challenge talaga natin, ang kalaban natin sa transformation is our sinful nature. Let's look at verse 17. Sa 17, nilinyan ko, hinighlight ko dun sa, so diniscuss yung flesh, you know, and then dun sa pangalang may highlight, I said there, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Ibig sabihin, gusto mo, pero ang hirap gawin. To keep you from doing the things you want to do. It's clear that they want to do it. The desire is there. It's just that it's hard to do. Now, it reminds me of another scripture. Yung Romans 7, Romans 7, 18. Si Paul, sabi niya, For I know that good itself that does not dwell in me, in my sinful nature. For I have the, to, the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. Diba? Familiar ba in mga younger generation? Di ba? Familiar dito. Pero dati, sa generation namin, alam mo yung, gusto mong bumait, pero hindi mo magawa. Gusto mo naman, kaya lang, hindi mo talaga magawa. So, I realized that re that's really the challenge. In 2024, we want to be transformed. I ask all of you, nobody for sure will say no. Yeah? Everybody will say yes. We all want to be transformed. But all of us will have to battle and face our sinful nature. Yan talaga yung kalaban natin. Sinful nature, it prevents us from doing what God wants us to do. Kaya binanggit dyan, flesh versus spirit, yun ang labanan. Sa buhay natin, flesh versus spirit. And, here's the thing. Kung ang buhay natin, it's about flesh versus spirit. Naturally, alin ang madalas manalo? Flesh. Because, yun ang sinful nature natin siya eh. Flesh ang madaling papanalunin. No? Para sa ang Ah, uh, if I challenge you to uh, go up the stairs versus you go down the stairs, mas mahirap, uh, at least for most people, mas mahirap umakyat. Di ba? Mas madaling bumaba. Kasi umaayon ka sa tendency ng katawan mo na bumaba. No? Kaya madaling manalo ang flesh atin. Kasi nga, yun ang nature natin. And I realized this even in the simplest thing in, in, in our lives, no? 
I'll give you an example. Halimbawa, you have, it's Saturday. No? Alin, naglalabad, fresh and spirit, no? alin ang mas madaling tiliin? Entertainment? Netflix, Disney, or Bible reading? Or watching a past podcast? Or watching, you know, parang naturally, mas madaling tiliin. <laughs> Uh, and, minsan nga, pinaplan mo pa. Di ba? Di ba? Pero yung, yung uh, time with God, ang hirap i-plan. Di ba? That's our tendency. Or, eto, anong mas madali para sa atin? Eating or fasting? <laughs> mas madali eating, di ba? Uh, and uh, many other things. Or kapag may nangyaring mali, which comes naturally, mas madali. Magpatawad o magalit? Magalit. Kasi yun yung nature natin. Yun yung nature natin. That's why, sabi ni Paul, in the same verse, dun sa Roman, sabi niya, ang realization ma, I'm a wretched man. Ang hirap naman ito, no? Parang awang-awa siya sa sarili niya. I'm a wretched man. Why? Because our sinful nature, we, there are things that we want to do, we just cannot do it. We desire, but our sinful nature, nature gets in the way. And uh, uh, sa akin, actually, isa sa mga, uh, yung every year I want to improve is uh, my prayer life. No, my prayer life. Kasi naturally, hindi talaga ako prayerful. No. So, I'm okay. I study the Bible. Mas gusto kong magbasa ng Bible, mag-aral, makinig ng sermon. Pero hirap talaga ako uh, mas mag-spend ng ora sa prayer. And uh, pag binabalikan ko, bakit nga ba ako hirap? No? Na-realize ko, siguro lang, ha, siguro lang, I, I can change my answer in the future. Siguro lang, for now, na-realize ko. Kasi in, I didn't have a good relationship talaga with my dad. So, I don't know how to talk to my dad. I cannot sustain a conversation like that. I do not know how to relate to God, him being a dad, a father. It's hard for me. I can relate to him. He's my Lord. So, I'm going to do all the things na he requires me to do. But relating to him heart to heart, it's going to be hard for me. Because wala akong ano. Kaya nga sina, sina Mateo and Bettina, um, uh, I'm trying to not really teach them yung... Yeah. Uh, the way I'm trying to teach them to, to, to pray is not to tell them to pray. What I, uh, I, uh, I try to do is, uh, now they know, <laughs> is uh, before sleeping, I try to talk to them. So they know how to relate to God in a deeper manner. Because they will just think, it's just like talking to, pap, to my dad. Uh, so, but sa akin, it's hard. That's why... Uh, ang tendency ko talaga is not to pray on certain certain instances. Pag may problema, automatic sa akin, isip ako ng solusyon, isip ako ng, ng gagawin. And prayer comes last. Please bless what I did. <laughs> and um, it helps me most of the time. Uh, what brings me to prayer is God brings things in my life that there's nothing I can do. Yeah. Like, um, uh, when my dad died, there's nothing I can do. Uh, what can I do? I just have to pray. But I realized that my tendency is really not to pray. And I can see that it's because yun talaga yung natural sa akin. And I need to overcome it. So, so I hope that uh, the first point, the challenge, we realize that it's our sinful nature. Yun ang kalaban natin, number one kalaban natin. Because the reason why I want to emphasize that before I go to um, the second, the blessing, the second point, the blessing, which is the cross of Christ. Because you will only have the correct appreciation of the second point kung naintindihan mo yung first point. Hindi mo talaga ma-appreciate Yung second point, yung blessing ni Jesus Christ, kung hindi mo naintindihan, na kailangan mo siya. And isn't it true that the reason why we became Christians, because at some point in our life, 
Hindi naman dahil na-realize natin na, oh, gusto ko nang magbagong buhay. Hindi lang naman ganun, di ba? Or gusto ko nang ayusin ang buhay ko. I, I don't know for, uh, I don't know the story of everyone, but for me, it's the time that I realized I need God. And it brought me to be changed because I realized my need for God. So, since I emphasize that now, now we go to the second point, the blessing. So, kung ang kalaban natin, sinful nature natin, at mukhang kaawa-awa naman ang state natin, no? gusto natin, pero ano magagawa natin? There's a blessing. There is a blessing. And that is Jesus Christ, the cross of Christ, which we remember in our communion. So, since we see that flesh and spirit, yung lagi ang naglalaban, and para bang sure ball na, palaging panalo si flesh, kasi nga, yun ang tendency natin. But, let's see, kung pwedeng magbago ang ending ng laban. Let's read in verse 24. And those who belong to Christ, Jesus, that means, that's us, disciples, tayo yun. So let's pay attention kasi that tayo yan eh. To those who belong to Christ Jesus, they have crucified the flesh. I don't know for you, sa akin, ang dating nun, para bang ang hirap ng laban ng flesh and spirit, no? parang talo ko. But that gives me an assurance. There is an assurance. If you belong to Christ, if you're a disciple right now, you can crucify the flesh. You can let the Spirit win. There is hope, and not just hope, there's actually an assurance. Hindi naman niya sinabi na pwedeng, it can go either way. It just says, it's done. If you're in Christ Jesus, it's done. You can have crucified the flesh. You can, you can have an assurance. So, there is an assurance that we can win against the flesh. So, we can transform and be like Christ even if our tendency is the other way. Okay? Now, um, before we um, uh, continue on, I want you to, to pay attention to some wordplay na ginawa ni, ni Paul. Sabi niya, merong dalawang kinocompare dyan, di ba? Flesh and spirit. But there is something interesting. Sabi niya, kinocompare niya yung works of the flesh Versus, fruit of the Spirit. So, ang question ko, bakit parang magkaiba? Bakit hindi niya sinabi na works of the flesh versus works of the Spirit? Bakit nga ba hindi ganun? Bakit, bakit fruit? Bakit hindi works of the flesh and works of the Spirit? Because when you say work, you're actually the actor. Ikaw, ikaw may hawak niyan. Ikaw ang ano. You're the doer. It depends on you. So, but if it depends on us, we rely on ourselves, our tendency is actually to sin. Diba? That's why it's works of the flesh. If we're talking of works, ah, it's best to tag it with flesh. Because that's our tendency. Works of the flesh. Fruits. And another thing that we can realize from here is fruits of the Spirit. The reason why it's not works of the Spirit because you cannot get the fruits of the Spirit through works. It just, it just does, it's not designed that way. Kahit anong gawin mo, hindi mo makukuha yung describe doon na joy, peace, love. You cannot do it. Because it's a fruit. It's not a work. So, that's why Kung babalikan natin yung context ng ano ng mga Galatian, di ba? Pinapaalala niya, hindi to gospel ng work, ha? Gospel to ng grace. So be careful why you do things. Similarly, as we strive to be transformed and go after the fruits of the Spirit, let us be reminded that it's not works of the Spirit. Okay? Now, since nasettle na natin yun, why it's not work. Now, let's talk about fruits. Let's talk about fruits. Okay? It's a nice metaphor. Actually, na-appreciate ko nga na ginamit niya yung fruits kasi parang madaling makarelate. Diba? Kasi kahit saan bansa ka pumunta, may fruit. Kahit saan kang 
Uh, I mean, kahit sa ang lahi mo dali ng salitang fruit, makakarelate sila. It's a nice metaphor. And, and pag naiisip niyo, pag ako, nung naiisip ko itong fruit of the Spirit, there's another scripture na naman that comes to mind. And that is John 15. John 15, 4 to 5. Yung vine and the branches, naalala niyo yun, vine and the branches, abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. So yun yung picture na kailangan nating uh, maalala. Na yung transformation pala. Fruits of the Spirit. Mga magandang pagbabago sa buhay natin. Alalahanin natin, i-picture natin, fruit siya. Fruit siya. Hindi mo pwedeng, alam mo yung pag may branch, kahit anong gawin niya, concentration, hindi lalabas yung fruit dyan. Di ba? Kahit anong gawin niya, walang lalabas. Anong kailangan sa branch? Kailangan, nakadikit siya sa tree. Yun lang naman yung ano doon. Fruits, yes! Uh, uh, the, the branches, yes, they have the fruits. Di ba? Doon mo talaga makikita. But they cannot bear fruit on their own. That's the point. The key to bearing fruit is how they are attached to the branches. So the main point of this, I think, how we appreciate, we should appreciate it, and yung sa dyan, is branches don't bear fruit on their own. It's actually a result of being connected to the tree. That's why it's called fruit. It is related dun sa sinabi ni Kuya Romel na passive. Diba? Yung transformation is, is passive. Ikaw, sa, 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 sa yun nangyayari yun. Similarly, the fruits happen to you if you are connected. Connected to the tree. So, for 2024, hindi ko na tatanungin kung gusto niyong mag-transform. I know you guys wanted to uh, transform. Maybe there are fruits of the Spirit na gusto niyong makita sa, sa uh, buhay ninyo. But I want to remind you that as you try to have goals of transformation for your life, maybe it's a New Year's resolution, I don't know kung anong uh, uh, goal ninyo. Pero if there are positive changes that you want to aspire for this 2024, this is a reminder that dapat tama yung focus natin. Ibig sabihin, ang focus mo, hindi yung output. Ang focus mo, yung input. Di ba? Ang focus mo, hindi yung fruit. Ang focus mo, maging connected kay God. Yun ang focus mo. And yun ang magdadala ng transformation. And uh, thinking of that, uh, as we near the closing, para siyang na naisip ko yung, diba, if you want to go from one place to another, it's like transformation from your old self to a new one. There should be something that's fueling you. Diba? Um, and uh, I think of it, para siyang car, diba? yung car, uh, before, we were familiar with conventional cars. Ang fuel niya, Ang nagpapatakbo sa kanya, uh, gasoline or diesel, so fuel, no? Pero yung, yung may ngayon, meron ng tinatawag na electric cars. No? Ang nagpapatakbo sa kanya, electricity, battery. No? So, ibig sabihin, kung ang isang electric car, hindi mo pwedeng lagyan ng gasolina, di ba? And the same way yung gasolina, hindi mo pwedeng uh, isaksak. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan tama yung nagpapatakbo sa atin. You can be eyeing for that fruit, but if you're focused on getting lang yung output, pero ang nagpapatakbo sa iyo, hindi yung connection mo kay Jesus, yun. I assure you, it's gonna be hard for you to have that transformation in your life. So, that's why we have to understand, as Christians, we are designed to be transformed and the transformation should be fueled by the Spirit. 
Yun yung ano natin. Ang goal natin. And I know it's a, it's a daily battle. Katulad din sinabi ni Pero Mel, the renewing of our mind is a daily battle. And I realize that as Christians, at times, it's not really, um, I think, kung yalim tulad natin sa conventional cars and electric, electric na lang, kunwari yung spirit, no? no? Uh, kasi nga, less emission and all that. So, talimbawa, electric. Um, what I notice is, at times, since we know we're an electric car, no? Uh, we should be powered by electric, parang spiritual car and spirit. But, I realize at times the challenge minsan is not really because you're starting to be driven na by the flesh. Minsan hindi naman ganun eh. No? I think nandun pa rin naman talaga yung desire to be driven by the flesh, ah, by the spirit. But, uh, na-realize ko lang, minsan, it's because we're running on both engines. That's the problem. Alam niyo ba na meron ngayong hybrid cars? Yeah, may hybrid cars ngayon. Yung hybrid cars, uh, maraming klase kasi yun eh. Tapos one time nag-inquire kami um, kasi magpapalit na ng company car. Basically, yung idea niya is nagsishift siya kung ano yung gagamitin niya. Depende dun sa sitwasyon. No? Minsan naka-electric siya kasi basta may, may condition na nagra-run siya sa electric. Pero may condition naman na magra-run siya sa gas. So it keeps on shifting. Keeps on shifting. And what I realized, minsan... Yun yung challenge sa atin. Minsan, nagiging hybrid Christians tayo. We are being fueled by both. So, ano ba yung nagpapatakbo sa iyo? Let's say, pag nasa church tayo, di ba? I mean, maybe you are so pleasant at church. Pag dito, ang tumatakbo sa iyo, ang fuel mo si God. But how is it when you go to at home? What? Do your kids see in you? What do your spouse see in you? No? Pero pagdating mo ngayon sa sa work, nag-shift na ba? Iba na yung nagpapatakbo sa'yo? And I know it's a constant challenge. I know it's a, a very difficult challenge. I remember when I was new in my company, um, uh, my, my company, Focus Global, I've been with them since I graduated. So, loyalty award na. <laughs> uh, so, so, ngayon, during my first year, during my first year, syempre hindi pa ako regular, no? I was really tested at work. I was sent to a client. My, by the way, our role, we have a sales part. We talk to clients and alam niyo naman, ang challenge ng sales is to be truthful. Okay, to be truthful. So, when I was there, uh, a project was just turned over to me. And the easy escape for the problem is to pass on the, the, the blame to another. Uh, and I was told specifically by my bo boss na ganito ang sabihin mo. Ganito ang sabihin mo. And I told her that, sorry, I, I cannot say that. I cannot say that because that's not truthful. And at that time, I was able to have a clear thinking because at that time, it's really coming from campus. You know, you are so idealistic and all that. The, 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 the fuel is really si God. I don't care kung matanggal ako. No? I don't care kung ano mangyari sa akin. I want to make sure that I do the right thing. So, the consistency, the prinipsi ni Mike kahapon sa mga brothers, yun ang important, na hindi tayo maging hybrid Christians. We run on the Spirit of God, on the influence of God. Okay? So, now, um, since we don't have much time, okay, now we go to the practicals. We go to the practicals. I don't have the scripture, in there, but uh, some practicals you can do for your transformation, you can read na lang. Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. Um, it says there, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off 
your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So basically, it, it gives you like, a, uh, you can do this exercise, the put on and put off exercise. Start of the year, we try to clean up sa, uh, sa house, uh, I think the post yung wife ko ng mga pwedeng mabenta and all that. So, but I realize it's very important to to really start and see if there are things that you need to discard. Um, there are things that you need to retain. Because at times, if you don't do that, which we realize, minsan, if you don't discard things, it gets in the way. Di ba? Kaya nga dun sa when you run the race, take away that anything that hinders. Kasi dapat mas magaan yung ano mo pag tumatakbo ka. You take it out. So, so one practice you can do would be, you can, in your quiet time, you can do two columns and just think of what you need to put off in your life and what you need to put on. Okay? So in summary, para mas maalala nyo, before we go to prayer, I created, well, being uh, uh, an architect, I created like an illustration para mas maisip natin. Uh, that, this is normally how I think. Kailangan mailagay ko sa isa isang illustration para ma-visualize ko siya. So, of course, hindi siya all-encompassing. This helps you understand. Helps you understand the scripture. But this is my take. Ito yung napipicture ko. No? Nung na-appreciate ko yung uh, scripture. So, para siya, yan yung transformation journey. Okay? Yung, kung ibahin mo yung drawing, para siyang light and darkness. You know? <laughs> Parang tumatagod ka, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, yun yung nag-decide ka na maging, maging Christian. Okay? So, yung left, hindi ka pa Christian. Yung right, yan yung Christian ka na. So, si God na in charge. Yung kaliwa, ikaw yung in charge. But, here's the, the reason why I incline it because I want to think na, okay, yung taas na yun, yan yung pagiging transformed. No? Yan yung Christ-like in the image of Christ. Yan yung goal ko. Yan yung goal ko. Kaya siya nasa taas. Pero, ang pinagmulan ko, yung sinful man. The one that's conformed to the flesh. No? So, ganyan yung, yun, ganyan, yung, ganyan yung journey. Okay. Now, let's relate it to the scripture. The reason why I made this. It's because I want you to understand that the reason why it's inclined Hindi ko na lang na ano dyan. Actually, ano yan eh? It's slippery. Yung incline na yan. So, ibig sabihin, if you try to go up and be transformed on your own, you'll just struggle and you will just go down. Kaya may, may downward force. Babalik at down. Mahuhulog at mahuhulog ka. On your own. On your own. But, when you decided to become a Christian and be baptized, Suddenly, God, you are able to jump. And you're now a Christian, and God uh, is now in charge. Now, here's the tr tricky part, which is actually yun, yun yung tema rin nung, ano, nung, nung Galatians. Okay, imagine ninyo na nasa baba kayo. Nandun na kayo, disciple na kayo, nakatawid na kayo. No? Nasa baba kayo, gusto nyo maging Christ-like. No? So, kailangan niyo umakyat. Yeah? But still, that one, slippery pa rin siya. So, dito na ngayon papasok yung works and grace. The only way for you to go up is you don't try to go up because it's slippery. You will go up because God will pull you. Si God nasa taas. Para siya nags naglalangoy ka, no? You cannot float if you struggle to float. You just need to relax and let the water push you up. Similarly, we have, if there are goals that we want, uh, we, we, we want to achieve, transformation, you can try to reach it on your own, no? But if you rely on your works, wala, mauulog ka rin lang. Kung output lang pinag-isi pa mo. But if you let God do the changes in your life because you're more connected to Him, then it will help you change. 
And malaki yung magiging coverage niya. Like for example, your goal is to read the Bible this year. Halimbawa lang. Question, why is it your goal? Ah, oh, because old Christian na ako eh. Parang, parang tinatanong ako, hindi ko pa rin na-check yun. So I want to, you know. Malamang, it's gonna be hard for you. But once you change your focus, same goal, change your focus. And it's more connected to God. It, it might happen. It will happen. Ang focus mo ngayon, I want to know God more. Since you want to know God more, you're not limiting yourself to 30 minutes, no? Meron ka, or 40 minutes, or 50. Oh. You just want to consume as much of God. Yeah? Or for example, you want to be, you have a, a, a meron kang a relationship a problem. And you're struggling to forgive. Okay? If your goal this year, I want to be able to forgive and let go. Why? Ah, because I open an or I don't know whatever the reason. Maybe it won't happen if the reason is so shallow. Now let's try to connect it, right? Connect it the mind. What if you go to God and you understand how much God forgave you? And then it will now help you forgive others. So those the, the goal can be the same, but if you're the one trying to achieve it, transformation will not happen. So let God do the work in your life. So realize our, our tendencies, which is the slope. We have to appreciate God's saving work, which helped us jump. And let's focus on our relationship with God as it is key to bringing transformation in our life. Let's remember, transformation, it's a fruit. It's a fruit. So connect to God and be moved by the power of God. Let's pray for our communion. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you because every week we have this chance to just go back to, to the cross. Actually, it's very crucial that we really remember that point because it brings us back to who we were before God. Ang totoo naman yan, we are wretched people. We're sinful. There's nothing we can do. Even when we became Christians, there, it, we still have those tendencies, God. And yet, because of your sacrifice, because of the cross, we had hope, God. We had hope from, um, from the penalties of our sin. We are now able to, to become Christians and be saved. But not just that, but you allow us, God, to help in our daily walk with you by overcoming our sinful tendencies. I pray that as we try to start the year 2024, as we have goals, God, as we, have, as we strive to be transformed, not just because it's the theme of, uh, of the church, but because that's really your, your vision, God. That's your vision for our lives. You want to transform our lives. I pray that it will not be a gospel of work, but it's a gospel of grace. May it be fueled by the, by the right fuel, God. May it be fueled by the cross of Christ. May it be fueled by, by the grace of God. So just like Paul, I hope that it's the grace that will help work in our hearts, God. Uh, sabi niya, we work harder than anyone. It's not because of himself, but it's because of the grace that he experienced. I pray, God, that every single day we are reminded of that grace. And that grace would be enough to really help us, God, to choose the Spirit over the flesh. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.